Hi you guys, welcome back to another video. It is Shamira. In this video, we are going to be talking about medical coding salaries, how much you could possibly be making starting out in medical coding. I am also going to be going over why I chose the obstetrics and gynecology certification. Without further ado, let's jump right into the video. Make sure you give it a thumbs up. I'll leave a comment down below and subscribe if you're not already subscribed. Hello. So. Okay, so the first thing that we are going to be talking about is how much you guys can possibly be making starting out in medical coding. I All I did was I googled how much, let me see exactly what I googled. I googled how much do medical coders make and I found this website. It's nurse.org. On, hang on, let me share my screen so you guys can see what I'm seeing. And I found this website that actually has a breakdown by state, which is really, really nice. Now, these numbers aren't going to be 100% accurate. It could be a little more, a little less. It just depends. Um, but right here, it gives a, an entire chart for medical billing and coding salaries by state. So you'll see for Alabama, it says that the average salary is 49,000 per year, $24.72 per hour. If you are in California, obviously that's gonna be a lot higher because that is a state where everything costs a lot more. Okay, we have Louisiana, that's a little bit under 50,000 a year, $24 an hour. Um, let me see here, where's New York at? Cause we know that's gonna be high. Okay, actually New York is a little bit less than California. So New York is 61,000 a year, $29 an hour. Pennsylvania, that's the state I'm in, and it says 53,000 a year, 2570. That's a little bit correct. You see there's Tennessee, there's Vermont, there's Virginia. So it definitely fluctuates. So um, some of you guys ask like, well, how much would I make starting out? I really don't have experience. Uh, this is going to be like my first year getting my coding job. I really can't say how much you're going to make. It depends on the employer and what they start you out at. So I can't really give you an exact number. Um, it looks like for the most part, everybody is $20 or more. And if not, they're around like 19, which is a little bit close. You should be making $20 or more. We should be able to say that. Um, but if you're not, I mean, you'll get there. <laughs> it looks like for the most part, everybody, well, every state in the United States is making 20, over $20 an hour. I think there was like maybe like one or two areas where it was like 19. Did I see an 18? I don't think I seen an 18. Um, No, I only seen one state where it's average around 19 per hour. Now you could be making 18 an hour. It just depends on the employer. Um, again, I can't say how much you are going to make. So that is what I wanted to share on that topic. They will look at um, experience. They will look at the certifications you have. So the number one um, core credential that they look for is the CPC. Um, but there's also the CIC, which is Certified Inpatient Coder. There's also the COC, Certified Outpatient Coder. And then I think it's the CRC, Certified Risk Adjustment Coder. But for the most part, CPC is the number one thing that they are looking for. Now, if you have um, other credentials like specialty credentials, um, there's dermatology, there's general surgery, there's radiology, orthopedics, pediatrics, there's um, obstetrics and gynecology, what I do. Um, they could pay more if you have um, an extra specialty credential and if you're doing um, coding for that specific specialty. So like, let's say for me, I'm an obstetrics and gynecology coder. That's aside from the certification that I have, that is the position that I'm in. And because I got that certification, now I make more because I'm certified in this specialty. So, um, and now we're going to jump into why I chose obstetrics and gynecology. Um, a few of you have asked me like why I chose ob -GYN. And I think I've gotten back to you, but I did want to do a video so um, everyone else knows why I chose ob -GYN. And maybe you're trying to figure out what specialty that you want to um, get into. And hopefully this will help you decide if this if that is a specialty for you, whatever. So um, let me see here. I have my notes here so that way I stay on track because I can just ramble and then end up 
off topic. Okay, so why I chose the obstetrics and gynecology for medical coding. Um, when I started out my coding career as a coder one, I was assisting a coworker with um, maternal fetal medicine ultrasounds that they reviewed and they had, there was something going on at the practice where they, um, I think the person that was doing the data entry at the practice had went on maternity leave or something like that. So they had asked me to help out with the data entry for that. So this was before I even became a coder, actually, now that I think about it. I was helping um, uh, that practice submit their ultrasounds for the practice and um, I was doing that on overtime and I was just enjoying it. Now, I wasn't coding the information. All I had to do was plug it in and plug it into the system. So everything was already coded. I was just doing the data entry piece to it because the coders at the time, they were just strictly coding. They weren't coding and entering the charges into the system. That was left to us data entry um, clerks. So when I was reviewing it, um, I can see the notes and everything as I'm entering the charges, but um, that wasn't my job to code it. So as I was doing it over and over and over again during that time period, I was like really, really enjoying it. I was kind of understanding what was going on, but it was strictly ultrasounds. And, um, you know, with ultrasounds, like you read the ultrasound reports and they're telling you like how many fetuses there are, amniotic sex, all that information. It was just very, very interesting because like I have always had a passion for like learning about babies and pregnancies. I have always loved it. When I first got pregnant, I loved my pregnancy. It was the best, well, it was my only pregnancy. So I'm not gonna say it was the best one, but it was an awesome pregnancy. I didn't have any morning sickness, nothing. I just enjoyed being pregnant. So once I started um, doing data entry for that, I was like, okay, I think I can understand this. Like she was showing me what I need to look for, how I need to code stuff. Like my department is very, very um, big on like teaching one another, helping each other learn and grow. So um, as she would code something, she would show me like what I need to look for. And I was like, okay, yeah, I I, I see this. I, I think I can do this. Fast forward, an MFM position had opened up. Like I didn't have the right timing in order to apply for it. Like I think I was still waiting to get back if I passed my test or not. And there was an MFM position available. And I was just like, oh my gosh, like I need to get these results back so I can, you know, hurry up and try and apply. And I ended up missing it. So somebody else had already applied for it. And I... um had to miss out on that MFM position. So later, or after I passed my CPC, I have my CPC credential, and then there was another open position, which was the hospitalist coder one position. I was able to get into that position, and it was actually really, really worked out great for me because the MFM was a coder two position, and the coder one position for hospitalists was just strictly e &M. So because I didn't have any coding experience at all, I felt like, okay, well, this might be best for me to start out as a level one and then work my way up to a two and then a three instead of trying to have to understand e &M plus surgery. I mean, I probably could do it and I probably would do it just fine. But I was just like, you know what? Just start out as a one, then work your way to a two and then to a three. I um, got into the coder one position and I still had that passion to want to do MFM. So after like a year or two had passed and there wasn't any MFM positions being available, the second one that they had posted, another coworker had gotten and um, I ended up having to wait a little bit longer. So I decided, you know what, if there's not going to be an obstetrics and gynecology position opening, there was one coder that we had in the department that did OB-GYN and she pretty much had that down pat. It's, she's actually my coworker now. She had everything, control of everything. So she didn't need any help. So I was thinking like, well, if I can't get into OB-GYN and I can't get into MFM because every time MFM posts positions, everybody gets it but me and there's not an OB-GYN one. So let me think of a different specialty. And I started being interested in general surgery. And the reason why I was interested in general surgery is because you get to learn a lot with general surgery and you're not in like specific sections in your CPT book. I like to use my books and try and like be 
learning information throughout the entire book versus staying in one specific area. So like if you're cardiology or cardiovascular, you're going to be pretty much in the cardiology section in the cardiovascular section of your CPT book. But for general surgery, it says here, uh, let me see, in the code series or, or code ranges in your CPT book, we will be in the 10,000 series, 20,000, 30,000, 40,000, 50,000, and 60,000. So that is a huge range versus somebody that is maybe like an orthopedics and I think they are 30,000. They're not so much in like the 40,000, 50,000. I'm not sure what the 60,000 are. I don't think I know what's the 60,000. I'm not sure. But my obstetrics and gynecology one, if I look in this study guide, it tells me code range for this specialty is 10,000, 40,000, and 50,000. So, and that's pretty accurate. I mean, but you see the code series is 10,000, 40,000, and 50,000. And for general surgery, it's 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, and 60. So I'm learning a lot. So I would touch on the 50,000, but it might not be as much as somebody that was an obstetrics and gynecology coder. That is why I went, wanted to go into general surgery. Um, there actually was a general surgery position that had posted and I ended up missing that one as well. Like, I don't know what was going on, but I just kept missing these positions and missing and missing and missing. And I, I now I look back and I thank God that I missed all of them because I ended up with the specialty that I wanted. So don't, I hate to say don't get discouraged because I got discouraged, but try not to get discouraged if you are trying to go for something and it's just not happening for you. Just be patient don't give up, keep going because you can end up getting everything that you want and more. Let me see, what else do I have here? Oh, okay, I'll end up with that part. Another thing that helped me decide on whether I wanted to choose obstetrics and gynecology or not, or another thing that led me to want to do ob is I had to think about if I was a doctor, what would I wanna do? What would I want to be? And it definitely would be an obstetrics and gynecology um, physician, surgeon, whatever. I would love to be able to like deliver babies. I don't like going to the gynecology office, you know, where I have to be the one with my legs up and open, but I wouldn't mind being on the other. And, you know, educating women. I, I, I just love it. I love it. I love it. Love it. Love it so much. Um, not saying that I love looking down at somebody's, you know, but I just, I, I just love it. It's just, I don't know. It's like women, Coming together, you know, we girl, I love going to see my um, PCP. She's just like so laid back, so chill. I feel like I would be a great doctor. I feel like I would be a great doctor, but you know, it's a little too late to be trying to do all that now. I mean, it's never too late, but I just don't want the student loans and mm -mm, no, no ma'am, no sir. Um, but with this coding thing, I can kind of feel like I'm in the room, you know, with reading documentation and all that, reading op reports. I feel like I can picture what's going on. Also watching videos on YouTube to help me understand what's going on in these op reports. Um, it was a little cringy at first when I first started to have to like watch the videos when I see somebody doing it in a C-section and you're getting cut open. Um, the first, maybe a first couple of videos, I was just like, oh my gosh. But now it's just like, let's go. We gotta get this baby out. Like I, I, I wouldn't mind being in the room at all i'm ready okay we have a job to do let's do it i love it so yeah one of the reasons why i love learning about babies i love learning about or seeing women that are pregnant and um it's just like them giving life like th them bringing life into the world i just think it's so beautiful and to get to read about it it just excites me so much so yeah, think of a specialty that gets you excited to learn, to read something that's not boring to you. You like it a lot. That's how I decided on obstetrics and gynecology. And I've been wanting to do it since I started coding. Just helping, helping that MFM practice with ultrasounds literally just like clicked something and I've been hooked ever since. So yeah, and that was in 2016. So. Fast forward from 2016, 2021, five years later, I am an obstetrics and I don't know why I get tripped up on that. Five years later, I'm an OB-GYN coder and I 
absolutely love it. The next credential that I would look into possibly would be that general surgery certification. Not sure when I would want to start studying for that. Um, I mean, I already have the study guide and I probably would do really well. I'm not gonna say that I don't know how I would do. I probably would do really well um, on it, but the more experience you have, the more um, practice you have, I won't even say experience, but the more practice you have with coding, the better you'll get. So don't feel like you have to be in a coding position in order to start studying and learning. You can get on the internet and learn, literally teach yourself about medical coding. It's really, really not that hard, um, but you just have to have the passion and dedication to want to learn and teach yourself if you're going to do it on your own. Okay, you guys, so that is it for this video. I wanna thank you all for watching. Make sure you give it a thumbs up. Um, leave a comment down below if you guys are specialty coders, what specialty you guys have or credential that you guys have, um, what specialty you guys are going to be looking for. Are you guys going to be looking into obstetrics and gynecology as well? I do have a lot of you guys that comment and say that you guys are either applying for ob or you guys are obstetrics and gynecology coders. And I think that is so exciting. Um, but yeah, comment down below. Thank you all. Thank you all for watching, for all the views. And I hope to see you all in my next one. Bye.